TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. In the face of a looming investigation by the International Criminal Court in The Hague into alleged war crimes, which the Palestinians claim were committed by Israel, hundreds of Israeli citizens may be subject to arrests while visiting Europe or elsewhere. Israel intends to establish a special security arrangement with its Gulf Arab partners in light of mutual concerns regarding Iran. Washington voices outrage over Tehran's evident role in fanning the flames of conflict in Yemen. In the face of a looming investigation by the International Criminal Court, or ICC, into alleged war crimes which the Palestinians claim were committed by Israel in the West Bank, East Jerusalem and Gaza Strip, hundreds of Israeli citizens may be subject to arrests while visiting Europe or elsewhere. The Hague-based tribunal ruled on February 5th of last month that it has jurisdiction in the situation in Palestine branding the Palestinian Authority a state party to the Rome Statute. And while the ruling asserts that the court is not constitutionally competent to determine matters of statehood that would bind the international community, nor is it adjudicating a border dispute under international law, or even prejudging the question of future borders, the ICC determined that its territorial jurisdiction extends to, quote, territories occupied by Israel since 1967, namely Gaza and the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. The court's determination is chiefly derived from United Nations resolutions that were adopted by the world body's General Assembly, which repeatedly, quote, reaffirmed the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination and to independence in their state of Palestine on the Palestinian territory occupied since 1967. Consequently, despite Israeli objections derived from the fact that the Jewish state is not a signatory to the Rome Statute, nor does it acknowledge the territories in question to be, quote, Palestinian, ICC prosecutor Fatou Ben Souda intends to launch a probe into alleged war crimes pertaining to Israeli construction of settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, as well as into the 2014 war between Israel and the Islamist organizations in the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. The first aspect of the anticipated probe, which labels Israeli settlement construction a war crime, bases its legal prerogative on the Geneva Convention and on UN Security Council Resolution 2334, a bill adopted on December 23, 2016 by the Security Council when the Obama administration set precedence to Washington's backing of Jerusalem by refusing to veto the perceived anti-Israeli policy resolution merely four weeks before the inauguration of U.S. President Donald Trump on January 20, 2017. The second aspect of the expected ICC investigation focuses on the 2014 Gaza War, referred to in Israel as Operation Protective Edge. While the IDF launched a military offensive into the densely populated Gaza Strip in response to indiscriminate rocket fire by the internationally recognized terror group Hamas and its Islamist allies toward Israel's civilian communities, the Palestinian leadership insists that Israel repeatedly committed war crimes during the course of the conflict. It is important to highlight, however, that Israel does not intend to cooperate with the ICC investigation accusing the court of being tainted by political considerations. Meanwhile, addressing the anticipated probe from an IDF military base near the border with Gaza, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz, who served as the Israeli military chief of general staff during the 2014 war, voiced his outrage over the prospects of the investigation. I think it's a very negative development, the fact that the ICC has been contaminated by political uh, aspects uh, that uh, creates the situation in which uh, we are the only democracy in the Middle East. We are the only one who follows the international law and we are the only one to be blamed. That's ridiculous. What are you doing to counter this? Uh, we have our own teams working in different places to work and to try to influence them. And at the same time, we're taking all the measures needed. How many Israelis, how many Israelis, yourself included, 
might expect to be targeted for arrest. Ah, uh, yes, several hundreds, but uh, we will take care of everybody. The top Israeli defense official went on to respond to a question about whether Jerusalem intends to establish a defense pact with its new partners in the Gulf, including the United Arab Emirates and the Kingdom of Bahrain, alongside other regional actors, including potentially Saudi Arabia, in light of growing concerns stemming from the Islamic Republic of Iran. I don't think it's going to be a defense pact, but we're going to develop defense relations with every country that we have relations with. We have this process of setting up a special security arrangement, and within this arrangement we can continue and develop our relations. While Minister Gunn stopped short from elaborating as to what would such a special security arrangement entail, knowledgeable sources informed TV7 that it is expected to go well beyond intelligence sharing. Earlier in Jerusalem, the first ambassador of the United Arab Emirates to Israel, Muhammad El Haya, presented his credentials to Israeli President Reuven Rivlin in a move that further highlights the deepening relations between the two countries. Subsequently, the Emirati diplomat was hosted by Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, who did not hide his excitement about the promising prospects for Israeli Emirati cooperation. We are a beacon of hope. We bring good news to the Middle East, and I hope together we can do more. Well, the sky is not the limit the limit because you already went to space, to Mars. So yes, indeed. <laughs> I spoke to, uh, uh, to uh, Sheikh Muhammad uh, two days ago and uh, I said, uh, you know, the sky is not the limit. He says, what we can do in space is unbelievable. He's right. What we can do on the ground and what can we, we can do up in space is unbelievable. So we have a lot of work to do together. In other, yet somewhat related news, Israeli Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi traveled to Israel's eastern neighbor yesterday, during which he held a meeting with his Jordanian counterpart, Ayman Safadi. According to an official communique, the two top diplomats met privately for a one-on-one -on -one meeting that lasted roughly an hour. They discussed a series of regional issues, including Iran, Syria, the situation of the Palestinian Authority, and the upcoming Palestinian elections. This was the third meeting they have held in Jordan since Minister Ashkenazi assumed office. Meanwhile, Israel's deepening relations with Arab states in the region is evidently infuriating the Islamic Republic of Iran, which regards Jerusalem's warming ties with Gulf Arab states a security threat to Tehran. <laughs> در حوزه امنیت ملی ما رژیم اشغالگر قدس به خوبی میدونه که پاسخ ما همواره محکم و دقیق بوده. The voiced Iranian threat comes at a time when it is seemingly wary over prospects of an Israeli attack after the latter accused it of bombing an Israeli-owned freighter in the Gulf of Oman. Consequently, Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, Gilad Erdan, sent a formal letter of complaint to the Security Council and to Secretary General Antonio Guterres, demanding a condemnation of the Islamic Republic for the aforementioned attack. Ambassador Erdan also stressed that Israel would use all means at its disposal to defend its citizens and sovereignty. Turning to Washington, where the U.S. State Department announced that based on the recent attacks by the Iranian-backed Houthis in Yemen, including those on Saudi Arabia this past weekend, the United States is imposing sanctions on two senior Houthi militant leaders less than three weeks after removing the Houthi militia, or Ansar Allah in Arabic, from the designated list of foreign terrorist organizations. State Department spokesperson Ned Price went on to voice Washington's outrage over Iran's evident role in fanning the flames of conflict in Yemen. What we said today in that statement uh, is that it is undeniable uh, that Iran has fanned the flames of conflict in Yemen. Uh, Iran has exacerbated tensions. Iran uh, has added to the already combustible uh, situation um, uh, that uh, has been ongoing in Yemen uh, for some time threatening even greater uh, escalation, miscalculation, uh, regional uh, stability on Sarala, of course, relies on Iran uh, for uh, weapons, uh, for other uh, forms of support. Uh, and so when we have talked about our approach to Iran, 
Um, we have uh, talked about the proposition that is on the table and has been on the table for quite some time when it comes to Iran's nuclear program. But we've also talked about that as a necessary but not sufficient element. When asked how does the conflict in Yemen impact U.S. policy vis-a-vis -vis Iran, spokesperson Price said the following. The idea that Iran returns to compliance with the JCPOA, the United States uh, will, uh, would do the same. We would then lengthen and strengthen uh, the, that nuclear agreement, uh, but then use it, importantly here, as a platform to negotiate follow-on agreements that cover other areas of malign activity. And we've talked about Iran's ballistic missile program, but uh, clearly when it comes to Iran's uh, malign activity, we have to talk about Iran's uh, dangerous adventurism in the region. Uh, it is certainly an area uh, that we would seek to uh, address. It's certainly something that uh, we will address um, uh, going forward because it does add to the combustible situation uh, that we find ourselves with in Yemen. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Bangladesh in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.